Greetings and good morning from Marshan, Manitoba, Canada. <laughs> That's a mouthful when you say it all together. We're glad to come to you with another discipleship empowerment word. And we're just happy that the Lord has given us another day to be able to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we're glad that you've joined us today. May the Lord encourage you, build you up, and strengthen you in His Word. And it's His Word that I, I believe that when we speak it, it can be spoken as truth, and that we can be confident that in the Word of God. Amen? We're going to talk again today about the Word um, Truth. If there is a need to talk about truth, it's in our day and age. We are bombarded by all kinds of things all around us all day long. And it's hard nowadays to find out and to really know what is true and what is not true. And the only thing we can really trust in is the Word of God itself. As the old King James used to call some of the verses, Truly, truly, I say unto you, you know, well, we can trust that the Word of God is true. And today we're going to title our message, Battle for Truth. And I think as we look at this scripture, we're going to see that, that it is a great battle. You know, I was reading this morning in a, in a book, uh, and it said that, you know, the sad thing that the author was saying, that, that out of 100% of Christians, only 75% of them actually believe that it's important to speak truth. And that there's 25% that don't believe that it's important to speak truth. You can be a Christian without speaking truth. You can be a disciple without speaking truth. Well, I think that's not true. I think we need to look at it and say when we can and we should always knowingly speak truth. Amen. And that's what God has called us to do is to be those who just don't be speaking half truths or no truths at all, but that we should be speaking truth that will bring honor and glory to the Lord. And I think the reason uh, it's so important because we need to realize that Jesus himself spoke nothing but truth on behalf of the Father and that the Holy Spirit continues to speak the truth of the Father and Son to us as his disciples. Amen. So as we go on our journey today, our second look at this word truth, we're going to go into the Psalms. The Psalms have over 20 verses when it comes to dealing with this area of truth. And we're going to work our way down through a few of them this morning. And I believe they're going to speak to us. But again, I hope that it's going to give us the bigger picture of the importance why we need to speak truth. And why we need to be involved. And that there's a great battle for truth nowadays. A great battle. I know you all know that. And you've heard it on television and everywhere else. There's a battle for truth. And I think we need to get into that battle and say, Lord, we're going to fight for your truth today. Amen. So let's be truth bearers for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we're going to start off in Psalm 15, where the, as we travel through the Psalms, we'll see that various psalmists have written concerning this area of truth. And in Psalm 15, verse 2, he says to us here, he says, he who walks upright and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. That's what we should be. We should be people who are upright, who we walk upright. And how do you walk upright? It is by speaking truth. And that we not only walk upright, but we do the works of righteousness. Things that are right. Things that bring honor and glory to the Lord. See, when you're doing those things that are upright and right, those usually are have as their foundation the word truth. Because you can't walk upright and be righteous without truth. Amen? And so they all go hand in hand together. We need to be looking at that. And he says, and we speak the truth in his heart. So this person, he walks upright, he then works righteousness, and he speaks the word in truth. From his heart. And that's what we need to do. Sometimes our head tells us, oh, speak it this way or say it that way. But you know, we need sometimes to shut our head off and quiet ourselves down and hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking from our heart because that's where the truth lies. That's where God has birthed and put his character and his nature 
in is in our hearts so that we can follow him and be followers of him. And one of his characters in nature is a God of truth. God himself is upright and he is righteous. And we can trust in him that because of his truth, we too can be upright and righteous. Amen. That's how it works. We don't have to do it in our strength or in our ability. We do it in his strength and his ability. And we walk upright and in his righteousness because he is a God of truth. Amen. We continue on as we look over in Psalms 25, 5. Another amazing scripture. You know, when you look at these scriptures, you'll see that how interesting other words that are built around this word truth. In 25, 5, let's go back up to verse 4. It says, show me your ways, O Lord. Show me your ways, O Lord. And he goes on, teach me your path. So he says, show me your ways. Show me what I should do, O God. Like that gives me understanding. And then take, show me the path that I should take this. Where I've learned your ways, now let me take it on your path. So that's, that's the foundation to what he's going to say next in verse 5. Show me your ways, teach me your path, lead me in your truth and teach me. Lead me in your truth and teach me. So as we're being led along, I believe the Holy Spirit each day wants to teach us truth. That's why I enjoy doing these discipleship empowerment words because I see each day God teaching me more and more about His truth. I think words are the most uh, powerful thing that we can learn and we understand the Word of God and the words within the Word of God, we will then be able to know His way, His pathway, and He will teach us His truth. For He goes on, For you are the God of my salvation. So when we understand this truth, we will then clearly see that he is the God of our salvation. See, people don't get it because they won't understand the truth of God. And so they don't clearly understand what the salvation of God is. And a lot of people do not have salvation. Why? Because they haven't taken time to, show, to let the Lord, or at least pay attention to what the Lord is trying to say. This is my way, he's saying. This is my pathway. I want to teach you my pathways. I want to teach you my truth so that you can have the fullness of my salvation. That's what God wants us to have. He doesn't want to have just a little bit, a little trickling water of his salvation. He wants us to understand the full truth of his salvation. Amen. And that's why we need to ask him to lead us and to guide us and show us the truth. Because the truth is going to teach us the way we should walk and how we should live. Isn't that amazing? What truth can do. If we would just sell out 100% to the truth of God, we would, we would begin to understand things and be guided and directed and God would show us. And not only that, I think our whole continents would change. But you know why? Because we would understand the full truth of salvation. I think when you understand the full truth of salvation, your outward expression is going to change. You know, when people, as I say, when they look like they've been run over by a cement truck, and, and, and I know that you are on the other side of the world, say, like, what are you talking about? Well, we have this big truck that carries cement around. And, and I use it sometimes as a weird little saying just to say, you know, sometimes people look so bad and so down and so humdrum you know, and they call, we call ourselves disciples of Christ. But I think if we would understand the full truth, the full truth of what salvation is all about, we would want to lift up our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. We would want to praise him. We would want to sing. We would want to glorify his name and say, Lord, thank you for the truth of your salvation. Well, then we go over into Psalm 30, verse 9. Psalm 30, verse 9, he says to us, What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? And so here the psalmist is saying, you know, we need to get the blessed answer of what the Lord wants to say to us. And he says, I cried out unto the Lord, and O oh Lord, and, and, and the Lord, I made my supplication. So he's praying, he's saying, Lord... Is it of any advantage that if I was to walk in my truth and that, and if I go down to the pit and that, it will mean nothing. But, well, Lord, if I go and I walk in you, 
it will be deliverance for me. Amen. Then in Psalm 31, 5, he says, your, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. And again, what is the Lord trying to say to us? Well, the Lord in this particular chapter is trying to say that the Lord is our fortress. He is our protection. He is our all in all. That's the truth. He is our fortress. He is our protection. He is our all in all. And because of that, we can say, like the author has said, your hand, and the word your is capitalized, your hand, I have committed my spirit. So Lord, I put myself into you. And I know that when I've, I've asked to be forgiven, I've confessed my sins, and you come into my heart, and I come into your heart, there's a, a union that comes together. And when we come together, the truth of it all, Lord, is that we're redeemed. Again, we just talked about the word salvation, and now we have the word redeemed. And if we would understand what it means to be redeemed, the bigger picture, the truth of redemption. Remember, you were on a shelf, or as it were, and nobody wanted you. You were that old car that was broken down outside, and, and you didn't know what to do. And here God is taking you and redeeming you back for His glory. He has taken that old, destructive, rotten, rusted thing and said, you know, I'm going to move, I'm going to use that. Do you remember when, when Jesus himself said, you know, he was the stone that the builders rejected. When they went down to the quarry, they looked around, they picked all kinds of rocks and they said, you know, that rock over there is no good. But God said, no, that's the one I'm going to build my temple with. That's the one I'm going to use. That's my son. And I'm not going to reject that rock. I'm going to use that rock. And upon that rock, we then can go ourselves. And it's the same thing. I thank God when he came into my life when I was 17, that he didn't reject me, even in the way I was, and the things that I was doing, and the places that I was going, and the corruption that I was involved in. He did not reject me. He come and he pointed out, he said, I want that guy. I want that guy, that Jimmer's. I want him. And the, oh, the truth is, he then began to bring his salvation into my heart and he redeemed me from that destructiveness. That's what the truth of the Word of God, no matter where you are, no matter how you've fallen down, what big pit you might find yourself in, the truth of it is that God can save you and redeem you. Can you trust in that? Can you believe that? No matter how far your your children or grandchildren or your neighbors or friends, that if we would pray and believe in the truth of salvation and the truth of redemption. Does God want to redeem everybody? Yes. Does God want to save everybody? Yes. That's the truth. That's the truth. Go and fact check it if you want to. Go and look at it. That's the truth. God wants to redeem us and to do his work in our lives. Amen. God is a God of truth. And the truth is, He is a God of redemption. Wow. Isn't these exciting things when you, when you see how they all tie together? Amen. How God wants to speak into our heart. How God wants to lead us and teach us in the ways of salvation. How God wants to teach us and lead us in His redemption. And this not only for us, but then he gives this to us and says, you know, I want you to go out and declare this. Well, we continue on in Psalms. Again, Psalms is always there to lift us up, to build us up. And you know what? The Psalms are truth. They are spoken in truth. And that's why God has recorded them and kept them for us over all these years, because he is a God of truth. Psalm 33, verse 4, he says, For the Lord of the Lord is right. And all his works is done in truth. So the word of the Lord is right. What does it mean to be right? It lines up right. It's upright. It's righteous. We can trust in it. The word of the Lord is right. And as he goes on here, and all his works is done in truth. All his works. God is not a God of half-truths or quarter-truths or white lies or anything. He is a God of full, 100%. 150%, whatever you want to call it, a God of truth. 
And when he speaks something, it will take place. It will happen because he is a God of truth. Because his name is at stake. He, he brought to bring to us to realize that he is a God of truth and that he is trustworthy. And we can trust in his truth. Wow. Just think about that. He goes on, he loves righteousness and justice. And the earth is full of, his, of the goodness of the Lord. I believe that truth is all around us. And I believe what we're missing is because we're not listening to what the Spirit of God has to say to us, not only by His Spirit, but also by His Word. And we're not taking the time to study the Word of God. And because we don't get into the Word of God and the Word of God doesn't get into us, we don't have that clear foundation that is out there for us. That is like a rock that we can stand on. Why is it a rock? Because it is truth. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Why? Because he can be a rock. Because he is a God of upright, righteous, redemptive truth. Amen? And we can bank on that one. <laughs> That's our God. He is a God of truth. Well, let's continue on as we look in the Psalms here. And see what the psalmist wants to say to us as we go over into Psalm chapter, chapter 40. And in Psalm 40, verse 11, he says, Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. Preserve me. Now, I know some of you on the other side of the world maybe don't know what this word preserve means. But over on this side of the world, we have this thing called canning where we can things and we put things in. And, and if you would go on in Asia and you go down to the grocery store, you if you've got a can of peas or a can of corn or something that's in a can or in a jar, like a jar of jam or whatever, that means it's been preserved. And it's been preserved for another time. And so here, when he says to us, I declare your faithfulness and your salvation. And then as he continues on, do not withhold your tender mercies from me. Notice how we said yesterday, how often you see the word truth as connected to the word mercy. And he says, your tender mercies from me, O Lord, and let your love and kindness and your truth continue to preserve me. So the idea, O God, you know, what is the preserving agent that is going to keep us on the straight and narrow? It's his truth. It's his truth. You know, he brings us into a place, not to let us go, but he brings us into the place that we begin a lifelong journey, an eternal life journey in Jesus Christ. And as we continue to walk and obey his word that he speaks to us, he preserves us and keeps us all the way into glory. Isn't that beautiful? No matter what goes on around the outside, no matter what viruses you have, no matter what sicknesses you have, no matter what financial troubles or struggles or whatever you may be facing on the outside, the Word of God says, I preserve you in my truth. That is, that is a fact that we can stand on. No matter what goes on around about us, He preserves us in His truth. Isn't that beautiful? Think about that for a few minutes. That no matter what takes place today, you're preserved by the Word of God, by the truth of God. And it's His truth that's going to keep us and help us. See, I think that's what happens with so many people when they backslide and they fall away from the Lord. What is happening? They're getting away from the truth of God. They're opening up and they're letting the world into them. They're letting other things come into their lives instead of letting the truth of God preserve them. Instead of saying, I'm going to believe and obey your truth. Even King David would say that. I'm going to believe and obey your truth. I mean, so many of the patriarchs said, I'm going to believe and obey your word, O God. Your truth. Your truth is as life. It preserves me. And I think that's so amazing. Again, in Psalm 43, verse 3, he says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and into your tabernacle. He's saying, oh, Lord, Lord, 
He says, what I'm, the psalmist is saying, what I'm doing, what I'm asking you to do is to send your light, O Lord. Send your light. Send the power of your Holy Spirit. Let it, it, you know, let the word be a light unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? Send that light. But not only to send your light, O Lord, but it has the word and, which is a connecting word. It says, send your light and your truth. So you can say, Lord, if you wrote it out in the longer part of the English, Lord, send your light and send your truth. We need both. They're like two sides of the coin. We need the revelation of the Word of God, and we need the instruction and teaching of the Word of God. And it is a light unto our feet and a light unto our path, and it is there to show us which is what is the truth. And then I think when you study this word truth like we're doing, then it makes more sense when Jesus stands up in John 14, 6 and says to all those people who were listening, those, those religious people and everything else, and says, you know, I want to tell you something, people. And they got really mad at him. They wanted to stone him. He says, I want to tell you something, people. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And there's no other way to the Father but through me. That just really irked a lot of people. But it hasn't changed. People keep saying to me, there's got to be another way. There's got to be another religion. I mean, we've got other religions around the world that call themselves Christianity and saying, you know, we all got the same God. We all got the same spirit. And there's just all kinds of different ways to get there. And we need to accept one another and open the door so that we can accept that there's all kinds of way. That's not true. I'm sorry. That's not the truth. Because the truth is there is only one way. There is only one truth, and there is only one life. And there was one person who stood up and said, I am that. And his name was Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm going to show you that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to die on the cross for you. And I'm going to rise again on the third day. And I'm going to be amongst you. Then I'm going to ascend into heaven. I'm going to intercede on behalf of you. And I'm coming back again for my church. And let me tell you, that's the truth. That's the truth. And that's what is trying to be said here. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let your light and your truth lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Let them bring me what? What is the tabernacle? It was the place of God's presence. Oh, Lord, bring me right to the very place of your presence. Isn't that beautiful? Let them lead. Let your light lead me. Where is it leading me? To his presence. Let your truth lead me and guide me. Where is it leading and guiding us to? To the tabernacle, which was his holy presence. That's the truth. That's the truth. Psalm 51, 6, we have written here for us. In 51, 6, he says to us, he says, Behold, you desire truth in my inward parts. And in the hidden parts, you will make me know wisdom. So he's saying, you know, I'm not just surrounding you with truth. But I want to put the truth in you. Now, how does he do that? Remember we said, you know, Emmanuel, God with us. One of the names of Jesus Christ is truth. His name is truth. I'm going to put truth within you. Wow. He's going to, here is being prophesied, I want to put truth within you. And he says, behold, you desire truth. The psalmist is saying, I know what you want, Lord. You know, people, we need to say every day, Lord, I know what you want. And what you want is that you would, you desire that you would fill us with your truth. In our inward parts, so that out of that living water. See, he wants to fill us in with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the presence of his living water, so that that can flow out as truth from our inward parts. And in the hidden parts, you will make me know wisdom. So here, we're going to go tomorrow into Proverbs. Proverbs talks about truth. And, and, and King Solomon knew the importance of truth. Truth, you know. People try to do all kinds of things. But he knew. That's why he prayed. He said, you know, when the Lord, you're, you've opened up this door for me to lead your people. You know, and the Lord asked him, what do you need? What, do you, what can I give to you? He said, Lord, what I need is wisdom. How to lead and guide these people. 
What he's really saying, Lord, what I need to know is your truth. I need your light unto my feet, and I lead your light unto my path. And that light is your word, and it's your truth. And Lord, birth it forth from the hidden parts of my heart, that it may come out unto the Lord. In Psalm 57, 10, he says to us, For your mercy reaches unto the heavens, and your truth under the clouds. So he's saying, Lord, just as I look outside today, and I see the clouds, or I see the sky, I can see actually the sun, I can see way up. And at nighttime, I can see into the heavens. And he's saying, that's how great an expanse that mercy is and truth is. How great is the mercy of God? It's everywhere. How great is the truth of God? It's everywhere. We just got to look and we just got to receive it. We just got to receive the truth of God's mercy. And see, a lot of people won't. They say, I don't, I don't want that. No, we got to receive the truth of God's mercy. And we got to receive the truth itself. We're going to look at one more verse for today in Psalms. And then we're going to pick up the rest of them tomorrow. But I thought it was a great place to end today. Because he says in Psalm 60 verse 4. Psalm 60 verse 4. He says, you have given a banner to those who fear you. To those who honor you, to those who recognize you, Lord, you have given a banner. What is he talking about? That banner is a flag. A flag that you put up the flagpole. See, when you went to war, when we talked about the battle for truth, we're going to see that the battle for truth, the banner for the battle for truth, is a flag that we need to hoist up. We have to make a decision today. Are we going to walk in the truth of God? No matter what the cost may be, no matter what the persecution, what can come from that, we're going to stand on the truth of God. And he says, you have given a banner to those who fear you that it may display because of the truth. What is it that it may display? You've given us a banner. What are we to do with that banner? We're not just to keep it inside. We're to put it up the flagpole and let others around and let others see that we are in a battle, but we're about, we're fighting for the battle of truth. We're fighting, and we're going to talk a little bit later on down this week about the full armor of God, but we won't talk about it right now. But in the sense, you know, you know which part, if you are been reading the Word of God, which part deals with truth. Well, I'm telling you today, we're entering into a battle, and we've been in a battle, and it's a battle for truth. And what we need to do, what we need to do as disciples of Christ is to raise the flag, raise up the banner of Jesus Christ over us and say once and for all to all who can see, we stand, no matter what the cost may be, for the truth of the word. And what is the truth of the word? That Jesus Christ is alive. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding on behalf of us. And soon and very soon, this is the truth. He's coming back again. To do what? To establish his kingdom and to establish once and for all his truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we can look into your word today and it can be a light unto our feet and a light unto our path. But most of all, Lord God, I pray today that we will put up the banner of truth over us. Lord, we know that you have also given us a banner of love that we can put up. But Lord, I believe that you are giving us a banner of truth that we need to hoist up. We need to declare and we need to tell others. Oh God, let it not just be hidden in our hearts, but let it come out of our lives as a river as flowing as sweet and fresh water to those around us, that they can too partake about the living waters of your truth. And so, Father, I thank you now for what you're going to do this wonderful day around the world. And may it be a day of truth for your glory now. For we give you thanks in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. And Lord willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. And I'm praying today that you're going to hoist up the, the banner and you're going to enter into the battle for Jesus Christ. 
when it comes to this area of truth. Amen. Love you, and we'll see you again tomorrow, Lord willing. Bye-bye now.